Over the years, many Australians that are involved in drag racing have headed off to the US to make a career for themselves. Well, there's one American with plenty of runs on the board who's reversed that process. Ken Lowe's headed to Australia to make a whole new life for himself in drag racing. In a relatively short time, Ken Lowe has established the largest and most modern drag racing chassis shop in Australia. Located in the Gold Coast hinterland, Ken and his staff mass produce all the components needed to build his own design dragsters and alters. Ken, after a long and successful career in the US as not only a race car constructor but a racer, moved to Australia about three years ago. What was the, the main reason behind that? Uh, well, uh, first off, my wife's Australian, so she didn't mind coming home. But the primary reason was the absolutely explosive growth of drag racing in Australia in the last four or five years. Well, you've obviously uh, brought some new methods to this country in, in the fact that uh, I think you're the only constructor in the country mass producing. Does uh, this have a real benefit for the consumer? Absolutely. Uh, not only does it get his car in terms of uh, weeks or months as opposed to years, uh, but he can usually get the car for half the price. Quality-wise, that's got some benefits as well? Quality-wise, absolutely. Uh, you get a very high-quality car because you repeat the processes over and over again. Now, your history in racing is you uh, ran top alcohol dragster in the U.S. Uh, with some success? Yes, with quite a bit of success. We raced uh, the top alcohol car. Uh, actually, going back, we raced the Pro Comp car back in the early 70s and uh, then went to the top alcohol car in the 80s and raced it until we uh, parked the car and then I uh, crew chiefed on Danny Townsend's alcohol funny car, uh, finishing uh, number three in the world championship in 1990. So this like intimate understanding of, of the sport gives you an advantage as a builder, I guess, because you can understand what the guy behind the wheel needs. Absolutely. I've been in this car, I've been in the, in the seat, I've been on the outside of the car both. Um, not only the, the race cars, once they go out the door, the customers, they become part of the family? Absolutely, absolutely. We, every customer that gets a car from us, we take them to the racetrack, show them how to use the car, where to stand, what to do, uh, everything about it. Uh, this is not a simple deal, and we try to educate our customers as much as possible. Now, I've noticed you're working on the flow bench here with, uh, you know, the fuel flow bench, so mm -hmm. imagine that this is now transferring across to some chin-up advice with some of these guys as well. Absolutely. You'll, you'll, find, uh, whether, uh, you'll find that there are a lot of teams around who use our fuel systems. And can this whole approach to race car construction, the, the full service from design through delivery, tune-up, etc., I mean, that's going to get a lot of customers. What's your capacity like? How many cars a year could you build here? Uh, I would expect that uh, we could comfortably build two cars a week out the door. Two cars a week? Two cars a week. Well, two cars a week, that's obviously going to put a lot more people on the racetrack. And well, that's what we're hoping. This is where a race car is born, on the jig. Each piece of bar work is put in exact place and uh, just tack welded up. Then it can be moved across for more detailed welding where this sportsman chassis is being prepared at the moment. This is the stock line of, uh, of race car chassis done here at Kenlow Race Cars. And then of course, we've got the custom car, such as this top alcohol dragster, capable of, well, well into the five seconds, 230, maybe 240 mile an hour. 30 days from start to finish and this race car will be completed. Ken, most race fans at a race meeting only ever get to see one of these cars complete, the panels on, and they don't get to see under the skin. Obviously there's a fair bit of technology involved in just uh, the design and putting one of these things together. Yes, Rob, there is. Uh, a lot of the design is based on uh, many years of experience and uh, some basic engineering values. Well, with a car like this, obviously the design's uh, vital, but I guess the, the, the welding and the actual engineering makes up a, a large proportion of the important aspects of it. Yes, uh, a race car not only has to be able to go down the racetrack uh, time and time again, repeatedly and reliably, uh, but it has to do that fast. It has to be very quick. Safety, obviously uh, heavy roll cage, etc., etc. car like this, the top alcohol car, what, 230-odd mile an hour? Uh, 230, approaching 240 on some cars. Uh, you'll find that the cars have to be safe. Uh, that's the uh, most important thing. Um, but they also have to be able to win a race. Well, this obviously is a, is a custom car for a customer, a top alcohol car, but um, the, the standard sportsman-style chassis you've uh, brought into Australia, the style mm -hmm. where you're mass-producing them, mm -hmm. are you getting good results for that? 
Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're generating a lot of interest. We've had a lot of car sales, and um, I think it's the way of the future. I understand like under ten thousand dollars now to get a basic chassis out of the shed at a sportsman level. Uh, listen, at that rate, at that cost, that's an excellent value, and it gives you the ability to take your basic engine, put it in a car, and bolt on the rest of the pieces you need to go racing. It's it's quite inexpensive, all things considered. So I guess the, the greatest comparison would be if someone's got a fast street car that they've been modifying for a while and they're trying to make up their mind whether to take it the next step forward and turn their street car into a race car, this might be a better option. Well, you'll find that it's probably going to cost you half as much to step into something like this and you're going to go proportionally twice as fast with the same amount of horsepower. Um, it's a plus-plus situation all the way around and you still have your street car left over at the end of the day. You don't cut your street car up to make a race car. This mass production approach to race car construction has many benefits. It doesn't matter whether it's something like a mounting tab for the chassis, steering wheel, fuel tanks, whatever the product, by producing them in bulk, it greatly reduces the cost and reduces the delivery time. All these components are for sale individually and just listing what's available fills a 120 page catalogue. The results of Ken Lowe's craftsmanship are safe, well performed race cars like Greg Lay's championship winning B Dragster. <laughs>